Well, my name is Steven Krauer. I'm based at Utrecht University in the Netherlands. I got my degree in mathematics and then I, I've been spending the last 45 years in the linguistics department of our university. My most recent uh, exciting activity was that I was the executive director of Claire and Eric from 2012 until 2015. And I'm still working for Clarin, but as an advisor. Um, I was actually one, together with the whole team of people, one of the creators of the Clarin infrastructure. So I was there from the very beginning. Okay. Outreach is for me our, let's say, moral duty to uh, reach out to other people, to make sure they are aware of the existence of uh, Clarin, aware of what we uh, have to offer them, and also try to help them to make use of the infrastructure to improve their uh, research. Well, the impact is, of course, uh, the, 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 the extent to which we uh, will be able to uh, improve or advance research, uh, either by uh, allowing people to do more with the same means or to ask new research questions, which is actually the most exciting bit. Well, basically I think what we have to do in our infrastructure uh, is that we should make sure that people in the, the research community can build on each other's results. That means that if people produce useful data, we should make sure that not only the results are published, but also that the data goes back to the infrastructure so that other people can build on that. It also means that if you're an infrastructure, just offering technical facilities is not enough. You have to do a lot more because uh, uh, just offering the instruments uh, will not uh, be very appealing to many people. You have to uh, build, in parallel with the technical infrastructure, something that I call a knowledge sharing in infrastructure that we use to make sure that people cannot just um, use the tools but also learn how to use them and how to integrate them in the research and so that they can also um, yeah, rely on the results by other people. So I think it's a whole, it's a much more complex thing than just the technical infrastructure. It's a whole knowledge sharing around it that makes, it can make it impactful. As I already said, it's by making lots of, of uh, data and tools available and make sure that we reach out to people to, to uh, uh, persuade them or encourage them to use the infrastructure and uh, to make sure that um, whatever is created in terms of knowledge and expertise it doesn't get lost but can be used by others to, to uh, carry on the research. That's a hard one. Because basically it's not one single thing, because you know, my, my favorite metaphor is the is a department store. One, the first question is how much things are you able to, to put on show in your department store? Because you have to show things in order to attract people, so that's one thing. And that's easy to measure, you know? I can count how many resources I have, how many tools and uh, the volume or whatever, that's easy. The next step is to make sure that your uh, department store attracts visitors. So uh, that's the next question, how many visitors do you get? That's still relatively easy to, to measure, you know, you can count the visits to your website and uh, uh, so that's already, that's an easy thing. And the, the next thing, that's a much more tricky question, is how many of these people really buy something in your store? So how many actually use the stuff that they download or they, the, the service that, uh, that you, get access, you give them access to? And you can still measure it to some extent, but the by far most important question is how much sense do the things make that people uh, do with, your, with their uh, research results, with their products? Do they do meaningful things? Or are they just, so, uh, uh, let's say, downloading things to, to solve crossword puzzles? And this last bit is extremely important because there, there of course, there are a few ways to see uh, how much impact you have by, you could uh, count publications, but one of the big problems is that uh, it's not always common to refer to um, a language and, and other resources that you've used during your research. So it's very important that we should make sure that people who use Clarin give credit to Clarin and to the people who have uh, deposited their data at Clarin. And that's a very tricky thing, that we really have to, to change people's attitudes.
At this moment, I think we have a list of some 200 candidate KPIs, but we are still in the process of selecting members. And as I already said, I mean, the, the ones at the, at the start of the whole chain in the department store are the easiest one to measure because how many products you have, you can easily measure because that's something you, it, that's completely under your control. But the farther you get, the more difficult it is. So at this moment, we don't have any, well, of course, in the end, it's the publications that, uh, that count because we are uh, serving a research community, but uh, we, we don't have any specific targets yet. We don't know uh, whether uh, we should go for, let's say, 100 publications per year, 1,000 or 10,000. We simply don't know yet. For the time being, I think that the outlook is very, very good, very positive. We attract more and more um, uh, countries uh, as members of uh, the Clarion Consortium, which is very good. We are attracting more and more users. So that's all wonderful. So I'm positive about that, but there's at the same time, there's the problem of sustainability, because we are relying on public money and you know, all our money is uh, given to us on a project basis, so it's always very risky, because if you have a grant, a grant for five years, there's no guarantee whatsoever that you will have a follow-up grant for the next five years. So we will have to, to keep fighting for, for our money and it's, uh, that's a bit of a concern, because it's also what you see is that, um, since we're working in the humanities, uh, we are cheap. We are a cheap infrastructure. And it turns out that it's harder to get money for cheap infrastructures than for the very sexy, impressive ones. Because, you know, if you ask for 100 million, people love you. If you ask for 100,000, people say, well, why can't you put the money up yourself? And that's a big problem. That's something that the, the funding bodies will have to understand. That we, we need that money because, you know, humanities are, well, I wouldn't say poor, but they, they, they're not as well off as the, the hard sciences where just the millions and millions roll over the table all the time. A very big barrier is what, what we've seen, what we see already now, that if we try to attract new people, then we give them wonderful digital instruments, but the gap between their research problems, the humanities research problems, and the, the uh, digital facilities we offer them is too wide. They, they, can't, they cannot easily translate their research questions into sub-questions that can be answered by the tools we offer them. They really need either training to, to learn that, or they need technical support in order to do that. And that is very hard to get because, uh, again, if you uh, compare it with the, the, the hard sciences, there everybody finds it very normal that you've got labs with te technical staff who do all the, the hard work and all the technical work for you in order to conduct your experiment. But in humanities, uh, labs are just uh, one, are not a tradition. People don't think of labs as something that you need because they say, well, you've got your lab, you've got your library. I mean, that's... Uh, and I think that's also an attitude that the funders have to change because otherwise we will never be very successful. I don't think that you can find a very good alternatives. The only thing you can show to your funders is that uh, what will happen if, uh, if the funding and support stops. Then you can see, you can predict what sort of disasters, well not on a world scale, more sort of local disasters will happen. So that's the only, I don't see any alternative, of course, no, no, I, didn't, I don't see any good ones.